Thank you for viewing this lecture. Introducing Kudras, Kubernetes Druid Autoscaler for maximum resource utilization and speed. Let me start by telling you what made us go down this road and implement such a service. Well, it all started with FinOps. FinOps, which is short for Financial Operations, is a management practice that promotes shared responsibility for an organization's cloud computing infrastructure and costs. Basically what this means is that the teams which develop and provide the services are also accountable for the costs in the cloud. And how is this related to Kudras? Well, at the time of writing Kudras, I was at this client <coughs> and we had a fairly big Druid cluster, which used AWS EMR for ingestion purposes. And every two weeks we would have this FinOps meeting to inform ourselves about the costs, trying to optimize and then operate in order to be more efficient and, well, save a lot of money. And we noticed that this never really happened with our EMR cluster. For some reason, and we tried a lot of ways, we just couldn't get the expenses down for the EMR clusters. It just wasn't efficient enough. Until we decided to try something else. Now on this journey, we failed a lot of times, but it's not that we failed. It's we just found many, many ways which actually didn't really work. Let me take you on this journey with me. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Joav Nordman. I'm a technology enthusiast. I like working with new technologies. You can call me nerd or geek or even both. It's definitely a, compl a compliment for me. At my clients, I, am, uh, I usually um, am applied as a tech lead or architect or even both. And in my company called Tikal, I have the task of being a group leader and a mentor. Let me tell you a little bit about Tikal Knowledge, which is the name of the company I work for. Tikal Knowledge is a professional services company. Basically what this means is we go to our clients and together with their teams, we develop whatever they need. It's usually not that we just give advice. We usually go to our clients and develop together with them. Also something very nice which Tikal does is it is upholding the Israeli tech radar Whoever wants to take a look, it's on Tikal Knowledge's website. Basically, Tikal is in contact with various companies in Israel and together each year they let out a new Israeli tech radar, what's hot and what's not in technology in Israel. So my client at the time when writing Kudras was named Fiber. In the meantime, they were bought by Digital Turbine and I will continue to refer to them as DT. DT, for those who don't know, they are in the ad tech business. And let me tell you something about the ad tech business. There is a lot of traffic and there is a lot of data. Just so you understand about how much data we are talking. So here are the stats. We used to have 1 million events per second as ingestion rate, bringing us a total amount of basically nine tera of new daily new data to be ingested into Druid. And the Druid cluster size was about 250 tera of data. In order to support all of this ingestion and all of this data, we had a very simple pipeline architecture based on a, in a data lake pattern. The ingestion was coming in via Kafka the servers, the attic servers they use to send, they, they're sending the data to Kafka. And there is a Spark service or Spark process, which is taking all the data from Kafka and writing it, some small aggregation, writing it to S3. That would be our raw data stage. Apache Airflow 
is synchronizing the tasks after that it would start a spark process which would take the data from the raw um, raw stage it would process it and write it again to a different place in s3 as the processed stage from which after this task was done apache airflow would then create an ingestion task for apache druid which would take the data from the processed stage in s3 by way of emr processing the data and ingesting it into apache druid making apache druid the refined data stage so this is the architecture those are the pipelines let's talk about what our problem was and how we solved it the problem was with the druid ingestion so let's talk about druid ingestion to begin with we started with amazon emr and what i can tell you with amazon emr it's so easy you just set it up and it just works first of all it's managed so you don't have to work really hard in order to set it up and have the ingestion just work right it is auto scaling so you don't even need to pre-calculate how much data you will need but whenever you need more machines then emr would spin up a new node so it just works and this is great it was great to begin with but at a certain time something just didn't work something was wrong the screen you're seeing here are the auto scaling rules and we worked a lot on the auto scaling rules for emr and we just never could get it exactly right sometimes we did not enough and the ingestion task would take too long and sometimes it was too um, too much and then we would pay a lot of money so we had problems and the problem was that the upscale took quite a long time right because we didn't waste we didn't want to waste too much money but a bigger problem was that even the downscale it took even longer and the reason for this being that whenever you're downscaling it could kill a machine which would have data on the machine and then afterwards when the ingestion task would merge all the data which each peon task or each separate task would collect then if that age if that node was for some reason downscaled then that data doesn't exist and the whole ingestion task needs to rerun so again the whole ingestion task would take much longer and especially the machines they're not tailor-made meaning that we would waste a lot of money on machines which would have too much cpu or too much memory we did configure some of it but it was just too wasteful so we moved on to native ingestion right that's the next step and i have to say we succeeded with the native ingestion it was great i'll tell you exactly first of all we had a much higher stability sometimes apache druid would lose connection to the aws emr and for some reason then those tasks they would take a long time they would get stuck so now with the native parallel ingestion we just had a higher stability and it was faster and i believe this being because the nodes the peon tasks are running on the middle manager nodes and it was just closer to home and the whole setup with emr just spinning up of the machines it used to take much longer so now we had much faster ingestion tasks but again something was wrong and especially what was wrong is that the total memory which we had in the cluster and the amount we used was just not in sync it was very very wasteful so the problems if we have to break it down the problems were the following first of all we needed a lot of middle manager nodes the tasks the way they worked the ingestion pipeline was a batch pipeline so the tasks would run hourly and they would run for 10 15 20 minutes and then the tasks would go, go down so basically most of the middle managers which we needed 
they were most of the times idle. Now, another thing is that the smallest memory configuration of the middle manager is based on the largest task, because otherwise the large tasks will, will get a out of memory exception. So it was actually very wasteful since we used to have also small tasks and also large tasks. It's just like trying to fit big stones into a jar and then you're actually left with a lot of air gaps and that's the waste. So we tried a different approach. We stayed with the parallel ingestion, but we tried a more dynamic approach. Specifically, we used to take the task parameters, we would, for the peon tasks, we would take them from the task itself. Thus, creating peon tasks specific to the size of the task, right? And not what was predefined in the middle manager nodes. And that worked great. So again, another step in the right direction. But, oh, so what worked was we had higher stability. We used to run, we, we didn't have as many out of memory exceptions anymore. And again, it was faster because the smaller tasks, they would find a slot right away. So it was the ingestion tasks, they were definitely faster. And the machines were much more tailor made because we used to, the memory utilization was higher. And in the end, we needed fewer middle manager nodes. So we took that jar, which had large stones in it, and we were able to fill it with smaller pebbles. But as you can see, still there is some waste in that jar. And there were problems as well. So first of all, we still needed a lot of middle manager nodes. And most of the time, the middle manager nodes, they were idle. Again, we needed to have more memory pre-calculation because we needed to know how much memory we would need in order to have enough middle manager nodes up and running to handle the tasks. Otherwise, the ingestion task would just take much longer. And again, we did have some waste because we just couldn't fill the nodes. So this, all of this got us thinking. We actually needed a system or a way to spin up middle manager nodes, spin them up, spin them down. And we needed to be able to configure them specific to the tasks. That's when I came across this project. KEDA. Whoever doesn't know this project, KEDA is a project for Kubernetes event autoscaling for applications. And that got us thinking. We could utilize Kubernetes for our needs. Let's try Kubernetes HPA, Horizontal Pod Autoscaler, right? Whenever we needed more middle managers, Kubernetes would spin up middle managers, right? Fairly simple, but that didn't really work because pods, see, Kubernetes is creating pods only upon depleted resources. And as I said before, not always were the middle managers on, uh, were the resources on middle managers depleted. The CPU was definitely not depleted and even the memory constraint, if we would have some tasks, there would still be enough memory left for no pod to be auto-scaled. So we could have added custom metrics, but the way custom metrics work, we needed to create custom Docker images, and we didn't really want to create custom, custom Docker images um, apart from the Druid official, um, official Docker images that would make things much more difficult when upgrading. So that approach just didn't work for us. And the worst part of it was that Kubernetes kills pods randomly. When Kubernetes is downscaling, it is not downscaling the pod which is not being utilized. It is just downscaling and killing just 
any pod within that horizontal pod autoscaler group. So what would happen is that we would have a middle manager node which was still working and or which had data on it and then Kubernetes would just downscale, creating a situation where the whole ingestion task needed to be run again and again. The ingestion task would take just much longer. So this is definitely not working. At this point, we understood that we have to do it by ourselves. We have to do it the way we know it has to work. And that's how we came up with Kudras, Kubernetes Druid Autoscaler. We started by simple system requirements. First of all, the most important, adding and removing of middle manager nodes needs to be dynamic. At any given point in time, we want to be able to add nodes or to downscale them. Now, new middle manager nodes must be task specific so we could tailor our nodes, the machines, to the specific tasks and thus create the highest efficiency of the middle manager nodes. We needed to be able to kill specific node when needed. We couldn't just like horizontal pod autoscaler just kill any node at any time. We didn't want any additional external dependencies. We wanted the service to be very simple without the need of another database. It had to be stateless. If it goes down, comes back up, it will just continue working. And of course, we needed metrics to know what is going on inside the system. After defining the system requirements, we set out to define the tech stack and we chose Python for its simplicity to create the service and we used fast API as the framework as it is a very modern, very simple framework for Python. The architecture of Kudras is fairly simple. On the one side, it has to talk to Apache Druid, find out what is going on there, what's, uh, what tasks are running and which are not. And on the other side, it has to talk to Kubernetes control plane creating and killing middle manager nodes. So a little more on the architecture side. Kudras is a cloud native service running on Kubernetes. It can actually also run not in Kubernetes, but we intend it to be run, uh, run on Kubernetes. It talks to Apache Druid, to the master nodes and to, to the master nodes in order to figure out what tasks are running and which are not. And in case it needs to spin up some middle manager nodes, it talks to the control plane, creating or killing middle manager nodes. Each middle manager node which is being created is also has also the configuration of the Apache Druid. So any middle manager node which is being spun up, of course, is right away a part of the Apache Druid cluster. In order to have tasks run on specific middle manager nodes, we use the overlord dynamic configuration, specifically the select strategy of equal distribution with category spec. This way, each ingestion task which would come into the system into Druid would search for a specific tier or a specific middle manager node. That way, we could tailor the tasks to specific middle manager nodes. Another important parameter which needs to be set is the intermediary data storage location. So if we would not have set this intermediary data storage type location as deep storage, whenever Kubernetes comes and kills a node, the data is lost and the merge task will not be able to find data. But having the data, the intermediary data, being saved in deep storage so we can, at the end of each task, we can kill the node makes this highly efficient. The metrics part of Kudras is also very simple. Kudras, by way of a Prometheus adapter or Prometheus plugin, is just sending all the, uh, all the data. It's 
opening it rest endpoint prometheus is grabbing all that metric data and we can see all of what is going on in grafana uh, the important metrics which we actually exported is the count of pods per task right so we could see at any given point of time how many points how many pods per tasks are up and the pods uptime so we can see actually for how long each pod was up how long in pod time each task would take the sequence diagram of kudras the way kudras work is very simple it is run in um, a with a cron basically it has an internal scheduling system it would start it is configurable we had it at each minute each minute it would actually start by first going and querying druid to see if there are pending tasks if there are pending tasks it would figure out which tasks which middle manager node needs to be run and it would raise a middle manager node or the amount of middle manager nodes it actually needs and it would raise them on kubernetes let's say for instance there are no pending tasks it would go on and it would check by talking to kubernetes checking all the middle manager nodes it would check if there are any middle manager nodes which do not have any process running and it would kill the middle manager nodes as soon as possible this the at the end it would write the metrics out and prometheus would just grab them the way it looks in the code here is the code for upscale so we have this function first we would go to druid and receive a list of all the pending tasks then we would loop we, we are looping through all of the pending tasks and we're trying to calculate how many middle manager nodes we need to create in kubernetes so that would be a small function or actually a calculation of how many pending tasks there are of a specific tasks then we would calculate how many middle manager nodes we already have in Kubernetes we are, which are not yet being utilized. And we also need to subtract the number of middle manager nodes which already exist and are connected to Apache Druid, but again, they're also not being utilized. All of this gives us the amount of machines which the amount of middle manager nodes which we need to create in order for the ingestion tasks ingestion task to complete the last line in this function as you can see is actually the um, for a specific task how many middle manager nodes we need to create the downscale is even more simple it would just go to uh, druid and it would check um, in Druid how many slots are being used for any middle manager node and if there are no slots being used for any middle manager node then it would go check for the IPs and it would go to uh, Kubernetes and kill that middle manager node by way of IP since this is a simple pod or deployment this is a simple pod which is being raised and not a deployment Kubernetes will not try to recreate that pod so we just kill it in the end again this is being run each uh, by a internal scheduling task so each minute we would perform this scaling first the upscale and then downscale we also have a um, a possibility of um, not performing this action on certain categories in order for um, it, there is an exclusion list so just to be able not to have this um, kudras run on all of the tasks if there are certain tasks which we do not want this feature to be run on this is what we have at the moment and it's working but there are future additions which we would like to have first of all we would like it to be reactive we want to listen for the druid metrics we want to listen for tasks which are pending and in case that we receive such events we would then try to react on it we do not want it to be scheduled we want it to be reactive we also want it to have we also want to have dynamic persistent configuration change at the moment 
the configuration is in Kubernetes in a config map. So you can imagine whenever we change dynamically, we change configuration. If Kudras uh, for some reason changes node or whatever, then again, we have a fallback configuration, but we would like this to change. So we're going to implement a dynamic persistent configuration change, implementing the changes in the config map in Kubernetes. Again, please remember that Kudos does not have an external database for saving or a configuration management system or anything. And last but not least, we are in the middle of trying and open sourcing Kudras so that anybody who has the same problem or wants to understand this better can look at the source code and run this. So let's have a small recap on where we're at now. So finally, finally, we have tailor-made nodes. This is one of the big issues we had in the beginning. That's how we got the highest efficiency to lower cost. Upscale and downscale is very, very efficient. Upscaling only when we need it. Downscaling exactly when the task is over. It is very fast. There are no idle nodes because as soon as the task is done, within a minute, Kudos will kill that mid middle manager node. So we have maximum efficiency. We have minimum cost on this side of the Druid cluster. And the jar, if before we had small areas of air, we filled it with sand, we filled it with water, there is no more air, we have maximum efficiency. So this was a long journey, but again, it's not that we failed at each and every step. It's actually that we found a lot of ways which didn't really quite work for us until we got to our success. For anyone who wishes to listen or hear more about technologies, can always follow me on Twitter and connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much.